This video shows you how Chicago's duo has lived up to the hype. Already combining for 60 plus points three times on the road, DeMar DeRozan's addition to the Bulls has been an outstanding fit, relieving the pressure next to Zach Levine. Here's why that's given the Bulls one of the top records in the East early on, and the factors leading Chi Town's tandem to a potentially historically great scoring season. Before continuing, only 23.7% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. And lastly, stay tuned for the commenter shout out giveaway competition at the end. Chi Town's beastly combination of DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine continues to rack up buckets while fueling their team to a 9-4 start to the season. A week ago, as of this video, against arguably the best scoring duo in the league in Kevin Durant and James Harden, it was the Bulls' wing tandem that looked like the more fitting title contender as they combined for 52 points in a 118-95 blowout to halt the Brooklyn Nets' five-game win streak. And now, they've ended the Clippers' seven-game win streak. Chicago took a rough L to the Warriors in the Bay, but last night, DeRozan and Levine combined to score 64 points, matching their most in a game. It's the third time they've combined to score 60 in a game this season already, and all three games have surprisingly come on the road. After mightily struggling against the team with the number one record in the league on Friday night, DeMar DeRozan came out and owned the LA Clippers on Sunday. Debo returned to his hometown to drop patented pull-up Jays one after the other, finishing with 36 points on 12 for 16 shooting from the fields and 10 of 11 from the foul line. Double D also racked up 7 boards and 5 dimes while being a plus 14. DeMar helped ease the ship after LA erased a 17 point deficit early in the fourth quarter. He scored four points and found Tony Bradley in the paint during a quick surge which put the Bulls back up five. Then Levine knocked down a stone cold dagger from three point land, followed by an Alex Caruso steal to make it 86-78 with 8.08 to play. After LA cut the margin back down to four points on a Reggie Jackson triple, DeRozan went to work again, getting an and one on a patented pump fake to give Chicago a bit more airspace down the stretch. However, in the final minutes, it was the former dunk champ, Zach Levine, shutting the door on the Clippers' seven-game streak. Levine knocked down his sixth three-pointer of the night and then crossed over out of a double team and hit a ridiculous off-balance fadeaway jumper from the corner that was nearly his seventh tray. One member of the duo hits you with the bucket getting in the crucial chunks of the first, second, and third quarters, and the other closes the deal in the fourth. That's just what you want from your team's main one-two punch offensively. The MVP candidate version of DeMar DeRozan is a level we've yet to see the four-time All-Star and two-time All-NBAer reach quite yet. And while I thought it'd take a bit of time for him to get acclimated in the Bulls' offense, that hasn't been the case whatsoever. Don't get me wrong, I ultimately had high expectations for DeMar in a Bulls jersey, making this video back in the summer. But DeMar coming to Chicago and instantly playing by far the best ball of his career, that's something that's been really surprising to me. On a dimmer note, DeMar wishes one man could see him playing like this, as he said that last night was his first game in Los Angeles since his father died. Quote, he was at every game. Tonight was one of those games that I wish he was here. Overall, bouncing back against the Clippers was a massive showing for the Bulls, considering they were coming off the worst loss of the season so far. Levine and DeRozan showed a ton of resilience with their response late in the game after coughing up a near 20-point lead. Maybe it's already happened as you're watching this video right now, but Monday night's game against the Lakers should be fun given it'll be Caruso's return to Staples and the fact that it's another homecoming game for DeMar. With their Eastern Conference All-Star starting backcourt, what's clear from the advanced stats so far is that Chicago is one of the better teams in the NBA at closing out games in the final period. In the fourth quarter, the Bulls are currently the only team in the NBA who are top five in both offensive and defensive efficiency. This is a complete flip from last year, as Chi-Town ranked dead last on defense and 16th offensively in fourth quarters in 2021. Taking into account seven of their 13 games have come within five points in the final five minutes, having two shot manufacturers who can get whatever they want on the court at the same time 
is making life easy for the Bulls, especially Levine, who's been able to defer to DeRozan as he battles through a thumb injury. Putting the rock in the hands of a poised perennial star player in DeRozan was just the calmness and talent that Zach Levine and coach Billy Donovan were craving in their offensive system last year. Even when he's having an off night, what DeMar brings to the table is a lack of turnovers and the ability to get to the charity stripe at will. It's not only his scoring and passing that are taking the pressure off Levine, but Debo's creation and masterful yet legal foul drawing, that gives possessions off for Zach, who's fresh to hit stone cold daggers when it matters most in the fourth. This is opposed to last year where Levine's next best contributor before Vucevic was traded midway through the year was Kobe White. With all due respect to Kobe, who makes his season debut tonight and is going to be a really nice bench piece for the team, someone much more elite on the perimeter was needed next to Zach. Now Levine's not even tops on the Bulls in scoring, and combines with a teammate of his to average 52 points per game. Lonzo Ball and Debo seem like they had the chance to add turnovers to the Bulls given their two high volume playmakers who take time to adjust playing next to one of the game's top bucket getters in Zach Levine. Conversely, the Bulls are top 5 in turnover percentage and fewest turnovers committed as well among all teams thus far. Another stat that speaks volumes to the Bulls' offensive execution is how they're getting it done in the last few seconds of the shot clock. The Bulls' 82.3 offensive rating with 4-7 to seven seconds left on the shot clock ranks them as the number 2 team in basketball in that area. On possessions where you're getting locked down, and there's going to be a lot of them in today's NBA with the lengthy defenders that you're going to face, you need guys who can just create shots from nothing, and with Zoe, Double D, and Levine, Chicago has just that. You may be wondering about a lack of defense considering DeRozan and Levine are two guys with offensive playstyles, but considering the Bulls can rely on DeRozan and Levine for pretty much all their shot creating along with Lonzo, that means they can load up on hustle monsters everywhere throughout their lineup. Alex Caruso, Javante Green, Derek Jones Jr., Ayo Dosumu, Tony Bradley, those are all defensive players and they play their asses off. On November 10th, Caruso had six steals, and he ranks number two behind Steph Curry in defensive rating among point guards. Javante Green's been probably the most impressive bull role player other than Caruso, with his active hands and size on defense and the glass. And don't forget about how good Lonzo Ball is at reading the passing lanes and guarding the perimeter. But those topics are for another day. Right now, we're going to look at the historic company that the Bulls' one-two punch is currently amidst. In the past 10 seasons, only 9 sets of teammates have both finished top 10 in scoring, while Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook are the only duo to finish in the top 5 in scoring in the same season, which they did twice in 2011-12 and 2014-15. As it stands, DeRozan and Levine are 6th and 7th in points per game, trailing only Ja, Paul George, Giannis, Steph, and Durant. This Bulls 1-2 punch is the best duo they've had since Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. With DeRozan playing the best ball of his career, having just turned 32, it seems like this man has at least another three years of elite production left in him. While this Bulls duo of course won't come close to achieving what Mike and Pip did, they have the goal of getting the organization its first title in a quarter of a century now. What makes the Bulls duo so good in your opinion? Best answer gets next video shout out. Today's commenter shout out goes to Space Race, who says the Heat are one of my early favorites as their defense and versatility at every position is the same caliber as a lot of the contenders in the past. Pause to read his full great take. The top three commenters with the most shout outs by the 25th of December are going to receive NBA merchandise in the holiday season, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.